And a very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to HitMix Radio and WEIU and your 13. My name is Jeff Owens. My co-host is Michelle Bravo. Hi. How you doing, Michelle? Good. Good. And pull up to that microphone, Mr. Blake Pierce. Sure. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. Very good. Yourself? Good. All right. Good. Well, we're going to talk a lot of, about a lot of stuff since you're here. You've got a lot of different uh, topics to talk about. But I think the first thing we'll talk about is uh, the new news about the winery. I think yeah. uh, before we get into some of the stuff. So kind of take us through the process and the plan of, 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 of the winery. Sure. Um, so the Warren James Winery that's um, going to be off Lerner Road between Mattoon and Charleston mm-hmm. uh, started out as an idea actually probably about 10 years ago. And uh, I was down visiting some friends uh, at Southern Illinois, and they have a wine trail south of, of campus there. And um, at the time, I was, in, I was a student at Eastern and uh, wasn't uh, much of a wine guy. And I was giving <laughs> my, my uh, buddy a hard time about, um, about even going. I was like, you know, that's, I'm a tough guy. I don't, <laughs> you know, I don't drink wine, blah, blah, blah. So we go there, um, and uh, we're hanging out, and I was like, this is, this is actually really nice, you know, and, and one of the things I like, it, you know, the ability to have a conversation, relaxing atmosphere. Um, and over the years, they've kind of become more prominent, and my brother Cole, who uh, also is an EIU uh, alum, um, after he got his degree uh, in sports administration, um, decided he didn't want to move around like you need to for that kind of a career and was looking for what he wanted to do next. And I said, hey, I think this winery thing's growing. Um, you know, is that something to have interest in? And so, long story short, he eventually uh, got his certifications in enology, which is the making of wine, viticulture, the growing of grapes, yeah. and wine business management through Washington State University. And it was kind of a cool program that he did through primarily online, but then he'd go out about three or four times a semester to do hands-on training. And as he finished that up, probably two or three years ago, um, he was trying to figure out what was he going to do. And we thought, well, you know, should we try to make a winery work? And so we looked at a couple of facilities that had closed, um, some in southern Illinois, some about an hour and a half from here. And we said, boy, it would be awesome if we could make this work in our hometown. And so we started looking for the right piece of property and uh, were able to settle on it. And uh, he got the grapes, vines planted in May and the building construction is, is currently going on. They got the building sealed up, and uh, we're hoping to be open uh, by May of that's 23. All. That's all. I got to ask Warren James, where does that come from? Sure. I know you've probably been asking a lot, right? Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, so, Warren James, it's, uh, they're both family names, and uh, they're our respective middle names. So, Warren is my middle name and was my uh, father's mother's maiden name. And then James is Cole's middle name, and that is our mom's maiden name. Oh, And so okay. kind of the combination of those. Also, there's some there's some other wine uh, brands that James kind of has association with, so um, we thought it sounded like a, a good combination. Yeah, St. James is one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I know a little bit about wine, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. Michelle? Um, yeah, that's exciting. I didn't know we were going to get that right after I graduated, too, but... Um, <laughs> Do you, are you guys going to specialize in a specific type of wine, or you're going to have multiple? So, um, when we get, so it'll take probably three years before we have a crop of our own grapes okay. to be able to make. So between now and then, we'll have to bring in um, other produce and, and juice to make uh, certain types of wines. And there's certain types of grapes that you just can't grow in this yeah. area. So uh, a lot of the the well-known grape varieties like Merlot or Chardonnay, th- those aren't grape varieties that, that do well in our climate. Uh, but there are. Um, several varieties that do. So uh, out of the thousand grapevines that, that Cole Payne stinkily planted while I was on my honeymoon, um, uh, which he doesn't let me forget, uh, we have eight different varieties that mm. are growing there. Um, I think we'll, uh, we'll probably lean towards more of a, a, a sweeter uh, okay. palate, but we will have s- some dry wine varieties. Uh, it, my suspicion is the, the market will drive kind of what you end up producing more of. Yeah. But, um, I do know also another ambition of his is to do mead. Uh, as well. Mm-hmm. So um, we have 55 acres uh, at the site uh, where the winery is, and a lot of it's going to be uh, wildflowers, and we're enrolled in a pollinator program. Um, so we're going to have bees and honey, and then also be able to make meat as well. That's, That's really, really cool. cool. And you have like a little restaurant there eventually, yeah, and yeah. things like that. So Shark we're going to we're going to have uh, food. Um, we'll do uh, kind of a simple menu, but enough where you feel like you can get a meal without having to leave. So appetizers, pizzas, hot sandwiches, things like that. And how many people is like a winery normally employed? Maybe if you looked for three years down the road. Um, three years down the road, it'd probably be hopefully similar to what we're starting out with. I think we'll be somewhere between 10 to 15. Uh, full-time equivalents um now like servers or tasting room people you might have 
40 people, they all work part-time, yeah. you know, a few hours mm -hmm. a week, but probably 10 to 15 FTEs. That's good. And so um, has the response from the community been really, really good about this? I mean, I know why these wine tours and wineries seem to be really taken off now. So they, uh, it, it really has. And I, I tell people that the first winery in, in our region that a lot of folks, uh, at least in the Mattoon area, were familiar with was Tuscan Hills in Effingham. Mm -hmm. They've actually been around uh, a little over 10 years, I think now. And, um, I would have told you 10, 15 years ago, it might have been tough to help people understand the concept, but I think they've become prevalent enough that even your um, people that don't like wine like the venues. Yeah. And uh, we'll have a pond, we'll do live music on the weekends, um, and we'll also have a, a full bar for if people aren't wine people, they get something else. So you just got married. You're starting a winery with your brother. You have a full-time job at Royal King, and you're also helping, or the, I guess, the face for the local uh, Emerald Lakers uh, Sports Connection. Uh, so how do you balance all that? I know you're young, but still. Um, I don't get as much sleep as I should. Uh, and I, uh, I really don't, I'm not able to get as in the weeds as much as I'd like to. So fortunately on the winery project, um, it's really Cole's show. I'm simply the behind-the-scenes guy, helping with some business stuff um, and getting things organized. But he's he's the winemaker. He's going to be the general manager, and, and he'll have a team. He's got some great people um, already helping him out. Uh, so that helps. And then any other project, it's getting good people to help you. Right. Uh, I can't do anything I do without the support team that we have in, in all those ventures. Uh, most importantly, my, my new wife. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what is, like, the interior going to look like? Do you guys have a plan for that? Is it, like, dim lighting? What does it look like? Um, so the, the the structure itself will house um, the production facility mm -hmm. uh, and part of it. It also then has the kitchen and the tasting room. Uh, so in the tasting room itself specifically, uh, you'll obviously have the bar. Um, there'll be booth seating, regular seating, and then there'll be a small uh, stage area for mm -hmm. um, uh, musicians. And then on the north side of the building is kind of a... It's almost like a sunroom feel. It's a lot of windows. It looks okay. out at the vineyard, and that is to be able to, it can be rented out or serve as uh, mm -hmm. excess seating, and it'll seat about 50 people for people who want to do private events or things like that. So I nice. read that uh, some wineries that are opening up right now have a little bit of trouble getting all their equipment in. Are you guys in good shape in the in the so-called the, the, the line out there of needing things? Um, yeah, that's starting to ease a little okay. bit. So, so timelines on things are getting better. Uh, specifically on the, the winery equipment, we ordered all the production equipment about a year ago. And so we, we kind of saw that coming um, a little bit with the pandemic and everything being backed up. But at this point, well, knock on, I'll assume this is real wood on this table. <laughs> it is today. Um, it is today. That uh, we can hopefully avoid that and not get delayed. That's good. Good, Really good news. I know people, when people get, it's like they ramp up to it when something happens, then people, you know, they don't get really mad, but they just, the anxiety, anxious is there. It kind of happened with the, the other convention center that the Yost family just put in is that, you know, it wasn't their fault. You know, they just couldn't get stuff in and, and, and there. And speaking of the convention center, with everything that's going on, and we'll get to the sports complex next, but with, with the convention center being so close to the, uh, the sports complex and the entertain and, and, and all that stuff is going in there that's a good thing I would assume in your world right yes um, so the new hotel being open is a wonderful asset to, to the community I think everyone is really eager for it um, and they should be the first to benefit from from that new facility because before you have a sports complex you have a lot of people that got to build it and so there's gonna be people in our community working on that um, and then I personally am excited because I see people if they're staying there maybe they'll come down the road and, and have a glass of wine too yeah. um, well, but it's don't drink and drive and don't drink there. and drive <laughs> correct there you go. Uh, yeah I mean it's, it's, now let's get to Emerald Acres uh, Emerald Acres Sports Connection is the the proposed new complex out there with you know baseball you know softball and indoor volleyball and all the stuff uh, I know it passed the Mattoon City Council so where are we at in that process and, and get us back on task there sure so um, the the sports uh, Emerald Acre Sports Connection Project is, is really two phases, and I can't remember if we talked last time I was on uh, about that, but the first phase of the project is the indoor building. Um, and so for that, the city council has, they have to do a number of different votes, um, yeah. some of which they've already done, um, but I think they still have some additional votes they, that they need to, to go through in order to fully green light everything that's going on. Um, but we're currently, uh, the indoor building is out for bid to, to contractors right now. We should have guaranteed maximum price bids by the end of this year. Um, and then that'll allow us to go out and bond uh, the revenues in which to actually build it. So uh, we're gearing to still break ground here this spring on the project. Uh, I know a lot of people feel like they're not seeing any progress, so uh, things must not be going on. <laughs> I promise there's a lot going on, uh, but it's all the it's all the behind the scenes stuff to uh, what you need to line up a project of this magnitude. Yeah, and you really can't break ground 
right now anyway because you don't know what, we don't know what the next 60 to 90 days are going to be like no so i mean we have, we have the building plans we'll have the bids uh we have to then go you know what's the interest rate market look like how does that impact bonds there you know all these steps we have to go through and i think we'll get through them but uh it's a lot of work i was looking on your website today or the emerald acres website you know about in, you know interest and it says that you know like there's a lot of negotiating going on now with some of the you know the plots and the and the, the proposed businesses so a lot of negotiations are going on with you know business and i think in the first time that you you came here th- were you on michelle were you the uh, I think so. is, uh, that you talked blake about that it really needs the businesses come before the sports complex which i don't think a lot of people understood and, and so you're still in the process of getting those and when those start to fall off i mean fall off or you you knock those down one at a time does that help push the momentum or how will that work yeah so the the new um restaurant retail hotels that that will need uh, for the project those are directly tied towards the second phase of the project so the first phase the indoor facility we have funding lined up in order to to go forward with that one those new new businesses are what's needed to greenlight the second okay. phase because it's the future property taxes and sales taxes of those new businesses that's primarily funding the outdoor gotcha. part of it. Um, but speak specifically to that, that's going actually pretty darn well too. All these pieces are kind of moving in concert at the same time. But um, for instance, we're working on a strip center uh, adjacent to Home Depot, and that'll be probably about 120,000 square foot. And I think there's six leases in negotiation right now. Yeah, I think there was. And um, they're working on outlot sales to restaurant users. And um, it's it all has to work together. We're hoping that everybody, it looks like it's all one big project because it's going so smoothly. <laughs> uh, but truth be told, if we don't have those new businesses, uh, we can't fully do the outdoor complex. So they're very important. Uh, I imagine so. Um, so the timeline, though, is still the same, though. Break ground in 23 for the for the indoor, and then, you know, is in an estimated time it would be open in sometime early 24? or what's Yeah, that? so late Q1, early Q2 of 24 for the indoor facility, um, and then the outdoor facility, depending on when we get those commitments, because they don't have to be built businesses, but we need signed leases from yeah. national tenants or uh, purchase agreements, and then that can get us what we need in order to get green light the outdoor. And for the outdoor part, um, sorry, Michelle, if you had something there. No. Uh, no. Um, for the outdoor part, is there a certain number of like hotels and restaurants that you uh, you, that you want? I know when you look at the map, um, is, is there like three hotels, three restaurants, four, two? What's how's that work? Um, to satisfy the demand that we think that the full complex will need, we will need um, on top of the new Hilton Garden Inn, we'll need mm-hmm. at least three more hotels and so we're caught talking to developers currently right now about it uh, because we would hate to bring people to town and they can't stay here even if they want to so the hotels are the retail is going really well the hotels is kind of where the primary focus is okay. at this point is there people that are interested though hotel chains that are interested so all the brands are interested uh, you know uh hotel brands existing ones that we have and ones we don't have uh it's finding the developers to line up to, to throw in the cash to actually make it is. Yeah. okay yeah interesting go ahead um, I was just going to ask, you know, what does your, like, day kind of look like since I know you have, like, a whole bunch of things you're juggling? <laughs> Give us a Blake Pierce day. Jeez. Yeah. Um, uh, the day is uh, varies a lot. Okay. Um, primarily, too, I recently transitioned. So I, I was the director of real estate and economic development mm-hmm. for Oak King. And then uh, I, my original career started in finance. I was mm-hmm. a, a finance major here at Eastern. Um, and so I've recently transitioned back. I'm the director of finance now. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, the sports complex stuff, I'm not some on the on the real estate development and the businesses and that. I'm not as directly involved in that anymore. Um, so a lot of my, I used to tell people, being in finance is a really boring field to explain to people what you do because <laughs> they kind of look at you and they go, so you do numbers? And you go, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. yeah, I do numbers. <laughs> uh, when you do real estate development, that's exciting because you go, hey, we're working on a new XYZ business coming to town yeah. or Dunham's is coming to the mall mm-hmm. and uh, it's not as much, it's not as much fun. Uh, I got a, a, a t- finance team that we are hiring. We're hiring uh, interns at Royal King. There's mm-hmm. a plug. Um, any EIU students looking for internships? Um, I think we have 12 different apartments we're hiring interns oh, wow. in this summer. Um, and we're trying to build a, a team to keep growing. So, How do you deal with people who are opposed to um, progress, for lack of a better way to say it? There's people that don't want the wine here. There's people that don't want a sports complex. H- how do you deal with that, or do you ignore that? Um, I think it's important not to ignore them uh, because good for me, nine times out of ten, usually they just don't have all the facts. <laughs> um, and we've had some people, specifically really a sports complex, that, that were against it. And as soon as we heard they were against it, we sat down and met with them one-on-one. And it doesn't mean they're going to change their mind and they might not like it just because they don't like it. That's okay. But by facing those detractors, 
you know, face to face, you can really understand what their concerns are. And sometimes their concerns are actually valid ones. Um, so I think the worst thing you can do is ignore it. But at the same time, you can't let it slow you down and you can't let it let it stop your progress um, because there's some folks that that's just that's what they believe and that's mm -hmm. fine. You're not going to make everybody happy, but uh, trying to take into consideration people's feelings is important. I know you're not going to name names, but I have to ask the journalist to me says, can you list, can you give us any names of businesses that are thinking about the sports complex? Um, I really can't I on the radio. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but I'll tell you, there's, there's several that will make people very excited. Okay. That's a good answer. You're, you know, you've, you've, you're good at this now. Yeah. I read also that possibility of rodeos could come to oh, this event. That's interesting. So, um, <laughs> Rural King being, um, being kind of the presenting naming rights on the, um, on the complex, uh, rodeo would be very on brand. Uh, for us, and we feel that a lot of our vendors would be very supportive of it. So we actually looked at whether this facility could be a kind of a year-round rodeo facility as well. We looked at literally everything as we were doing this. <laughs> Turns out this particular geographical area is not strong enough to support year-round rodeo, but we feel actually we could do once-a-year rodeo and bring it in and, and do a pretty cool event. I mean, it's, it, it, it's not really, I mean, maybe the Coles County Fair kind of does a little bit of that stuff, but I mean, nothing really, you know, like this. So. It, yeah, it'd probably be uh, a little bit larger than and bring yeah. it in. You, on those types of road, you're bringing people nationally yeah. um, versus just, you know, within the county like the, the, the fair is. Um, but, and people, that's another one. People go, well, we could never do that. And you'd be surprised. Like, I think a good example is the, um, uh, the Harvest for Hope concert uh, that, uh, oh, the, that, we, that yeah. we started sponsoring over uh, at Peterson Park. There was, it was sold out. Over 5,000 people came to that, you know. And I think when that idea first got floated, people thought you're crazy. So. <laughs> don't, don't let them tell you what you can't do. Crazy can't stop you, right? Yeah. Um, um, what has been the most rewarding part of this? The, of, of, uh, you've got a lot of processes going, winery or sports, or maybe you have one for each. What's the most rewarding so far? Um, for me, what's most rewarding is just is just trying to help, you know, the town and community that you're from. Um, you know, I, I've always had a heart to be involved in, in the things and organizations that matter to me. And uh, the things I tell people, you know, I'm on a couple boards here at Eastern uh, because I, I care about EIU. And I do those things because everywhere I go for the rest of my life, eventually when I meet somebody, they're going to ask me where I'm from, where did you go to school? Uh, and because I have the opportunity to be, you know, living and working in those same places, uh, I want those to be the best possible reflections that they can be, whether it be for myself or, or those institutions. That, so. When I say I'm from Mattoon, I want people to perk up and go, oh, Mattoon, that's where this, this, and this is? Or, oh, EIU, that's this, this, and that? Yeah. And, and that's really my motivation. Um, so I, I don't really, while the projects, that they're awesome in, in their own respective rights, it's really just trying to help better the, the things that made me who I am and, and gave me the things I've been able to have. Thank you. One thing we don't talk about enough is the, is the fact that Rural King is a big supporter of, of the community and doing a lot of this. Um, when you think about where you work and, and what it's mean, uh, meant, what Rural King means to our community, can you talk about Rural King a little bit? Yeah, um, it's been a really fun ride uh, at Royal King. Just seeing the the growth in, in my time there. This, this month will be ten years I, I've spent there, which seems crazy. Uh, but just the, I think when I started the back office, we, we had maybe thirty people, uh, seriously. And today we have three hundred people. Oh wow! And I think we now employ. I think we're. I know we're the largest private employer within the county at this point, and I think we have over a thousand employees locally. Um, so that's been awesome. But as we've grown, the other rewarding part is is how Rural King's gotten more involved uh, within the community. And uh, you go a lot of places or businesses, and you see Rural King's a supporter in some fashion. And, and I don't think that was always that way historically because they're a little more focused, I think, on the internal business. But when you can have a, a large local employer um, and be a good corporate citizen, like, you know, like First Med always has been, like the hospital has been, uh, you can find, you know, synergies to kind of help elevate everything. And if there's one thing that, that I like to say I've had a little bit to do with is, is helping Rural King help create some of those synergies and, and where can we plug in. And we have a few other things we're, that we're working on that I can't quite talk about right now either, but... You could. I could. I could. I I'll vouch for you. I'll sign off on um, I'm sure you would. So much help. But, um, <laughs> but it's really neat. And uh, it's, it's really rewarding. People don't... I think, you know, they're, they're quick to say, you know, th you know thank you so much for doing this. Uh, thank you for, for letting us 
be able to give back. How know? many stores Royal King have right now? Uh, 135. 135. There yep. you go. We're talking to Blake Pierce today, the Vice President of Finance at Royal King, also involved with the, the new Warren James Winery, as well as the Emerald Lakers Sports. Um, I keep calling it complex, but it's really connection. Connection, That's yeah. going to be tough yeah. for me to get in my mind. Yeah, the uh, the connection part is, is to help draw attention to the fact that it's not just a sports complex. Yep. It, it is an economic development project that's bringing, hopefully, all these additional great things to the area. You said something about people not knowing what's going on behind the scenes or not knowing that there's a lot of activities. Are there other things that are happening, or can you give us examples of so people know that you're moving forward well with Emerald Lakers that maybe we don't know? Yeah, so I think one thing that'll be a little bit more out in the press and in, in front of people will be um, when each one of the taxing bodies that's involved uh, on the on the outdoor side has to vote on those pieces. So uh, there'll likely be a TIF that has to get approval from the school board and the county and, and Lakeland and the city. They all have to sign off on that. Um, and so that'll probably pop up in the news, you know, for the next month or two um, for when they have to vote on it. Uh, but getting those documents correct and and um, everything involved with a public bond issuance, uh, we've, there's a lot of professionals, a lot of first great people working on this that making sure we do this thing right do you feel confident that all four of those bodies will uh, will, will pass this um i never want to speak for somebody else <laughs> um initial interactions with all those groups have been positive that's good um because for for pretty much all of them they're going to receive the benefits they'll receive from new businesses and and new new property taxes and new sales tax in the area and the reverberating effects um is going to benefit them so, you know each one a little bit differently and and they have customed uh, reports to help them understand that information, but um, you know, there's probably a detractor on each one of those at least. But I think the majority is, is probably in support. Good. Yeah, quit. Um, so, what are some possible delays if they, for whatever reason, do not? Would you have to like rewrite some um, contracts or something? Yeah. So, if uh, if any one of those bodies were to to not approve uh, the, the funding mechanisms that we need for the project. Uh, we would either have to scale back the project, mm -hmm. you know, pretty dramatically or, or not proceed, oh. um, which that would mean, you know, these retailers we're talking to, these other restaurants we're talking to wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be opening. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, their, their involvement is, is very, very important to, to, the overall, to the overall project. Going back to the winery a little bit, and when you and Cole, you know, you kind of got it, you decided, yes, we're going to go forward. What was the toughest part? I mean, what, what hurdles did you have to try to get to get to where you are now, where you're only a few months away from opening? Um, I would say the toughest part was probably location. Um, because we knew, you look on a map of where the winery's at, and there's kind of a hole, actually, in our area. And we knew we wanted to be between Mattoon and Charleston because we felt like that way you could capture both both towns. Um, we wanted to be relatively close to the interstate so it wasn't too far off the beaten path. And then I think an important attribute for a winery is you want to be far enough away that people have that escapism feel that they're kind of yeah. they're out and away and can relax. Um, while also not being too far away that it's tough to get to or, or makes the drive prohibitive. And so finding the right spot um, that also we're also thinking long term, you know, if wineries go well, it can be around hundreds of years, right? That'd be mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, but how can you make sure that you're not going to have, uh, you know, a, I don't know, McDonald's pop up across the street that might not quite fit the vibe <laughs> of wanting to have a, or what's going <laughs> to pop up in your sight lines? Yeah, and I, so we, we're fortunate our location kind of geographically <laughs> um, kind of sits up higher and falls off on the sides. And, and we have, we kind of control the view out the back um, to where it's at. So we think we have a location that can be successful long term, but we'd find some place that we could put it that met all those criteria <laughs> and that whoever owned that ground was willing to sell it to us and and we were fortunate it took us about a year and a half to do that but fortunately we were able to to figure that out so what will cole be doing over the winter to prepare is there anything else that can be done right now or you just kind of just wait so till um the one thing that is challenging is until you have your facility and all your licenses required you actually can't produce any wine to sell um until you have that so as soon as he gets that we're hoping in february He's going to be cranking uh, to try to get to get inventory and product. Between now and then, it's every detail he's on. He's you know he's out there talking to the contractors on a regular basis, um, getting everything we need for the business. We're going to have to uh, we'll start hiring folks you know this spring that we need. So um, 
there's a thousand little pieces to it, uh, so he has no shortage of. of Is he your younger brother? Yes. Yep. So. Cole's uh, two of three. Okay. I keep uh, trying to remember that. So little bro, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have about a few minutes left today with uh, Blake Pierce from Royal King. Anything that we forgot, Blake, of, of all the different ventures you're going into that we you want to get some of the word out or dispel any rumors or do whatever? Um, I will do one rumor to spell. You weren't in charge of gas prices going up. That was I, one. No, and whoever's in charge of Tuscola's gas prices being cheaper, I don't know who's in charge of that, but no, they're doing it. We good do job. need to figure that out. Yeah. Um, uh, Dunkin' Donuts is still coming to Mattoon. <laughs> I, I keep hearing that because Charleston opened, that Mattoon's not getting one. They still own the ground. They still they got all their permits from the city to, to start construction. So so that unless something weird happens, should still be occurring. I wasn't even going to ask this time because I had heard the same thing from I won't say Ed Dowd's name out loud, but he <laughs> promised me that uh, that Duncan was coming. So Michelle, any last questions for uh, for Blake before we we go on to the world famous random eight questions? Thanks for so much. I know you obviously are a busy man, but we'll ask you random eight questions about assorted stuff. But I want to add one that I didn't have a list. I mean. Do you have a favorite type of wine that you like? Uh, yeah, my favorite type of wine is probably a um, like a full-bodied red, like a Malbec or a, um, a Brunello. Now, who will get to name the different types of wines when they come out? Um, well, that'd probably be Cole and the team. Um, I'll, I'm, an, I'm a good idea guy. I always have 10 more ideas than he has time for. Okay. And uh, so he tells me i got to slow down. <laughs> so do you guys have like a possible design? on how you would label and package or not yet? Uh, yeah, we've start, so we have, we've created a branding guide. Um, if you go, you can go on Facebook, Instagram, or our website, and you can kind of see the, the general feel of the brand today, but uh, I think our labels will, will resemble that. Yeah. You can also, on the uh, on the Sports Connection website, you can actually, they're selling sponsorships now with Stones and things. Yes, so we have two websites live um, on the sports complex. You have um, the one that's, that's uh, Emerald Acres, I think, dot com, and then Emerald Acres Bricks, and that's where anyone, it starts at $500. So you can put your name on a brick that will be on a, a wall out in front, and then we have sponsorship levels that kind of go up from there. But that's that's live today. Yeah, I saw that. It was really cool. So there you go. Um, do you ever shop your competitor's stores? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> um, holiday shopping, what's your status right now? Not halfway or done? So I'm usually a last-minute guy. Um, having a uh, wife helps. So I am a couple steps ahead, but then after I screwed something up, she says i got to figure the rest out. Michelle, you oh. can answer that one. Are you started halfway or no? No, I have not. Okay. <laughs> Favorite pro athlete of all time? Favorite pro athlete of all time? Um, my childhood hero, Jim Harbaugh. I don't know. <laughs> Favorite Christmas movie? Favorite Christmas movie? Mm, that one's tough. Do you know yours offhand? I'd probably say Home Alone. I don't know. Well, that would be mine. There you go. I'll give you home alone. All right. Works. Last concert you attended? I'm going to guess it was the summer one, right? Uh, or not? Uh, no. I uh, s- went and visited my brother in Charlotte, and we saw Elton John. Oh, I saw Maneskin, like the Italian yeah. band. Favorite hamburger condiment? Ketchup. Like what? I mean, Ketchup, pickle, mustard, you know? Yeah, I'd say like pickles. All right. Like a pickle right. Burger. How often do you grab Royal King popcorn when you're in the store? Mm. Oh, I'm a popcorn um, addict, so I. Yeah. So I'm not a huge popcorn guy, okay. but I do every once in a while. I'd say 20% of the time. All right. So you like popcorn, Michelle? Yeah, I don't think I've ever been into like rural. You should go. That. <laughs> I got everything you need. So, well, Mike, so much. Good. Uh, appreciate you coming in. Have a great holiday season, and uh, we'll have you back in the spring. We'll give an update. Appreciate it, guys. We are W E I U.